hasn't been here in a while, we welcome you back. Praise God. I want to make an acknowledgement before we get into the word of the Lord. I, uh, Brother uh, King and Brother Felzine and their spouses are in Lincoln today and helping them with a uh, block party there. And so we miss them, but uh, he normally makes these acknowledgements. But since he is not here, I'd like to say thank you. This is a card from Sister Billingsley and I. It's to all of you. Even though you didn't have to do it, you did it anyway. And it was very, very much appreciated. We really appreciate you honoring us for our 40th wedding anniversary. Thank you for your generous gift to help us on our trip to see our family. We are blessed to be your pastor, love pastor and Sister Billingsley. We do want you to know we love and appreciate you. <clears throat> Praise God. Well, a lot has already gone into this day. Hallelujah. How, how many is ready for a few moments of the word today? Praise God. Amen. I'd like to begin our message today that, and uh, speaking in reference to some uh, young people that had uh, wound up in New York City from various parts of the world, and um, they were ask, you know, how they felt about where they were at in relationship as to where they were. Uh, you got to imagine this is quite a, a change for a, uh, a man from Haiti to, to go to New York City and to be living there. And uh, he described it as just a city on a hill. It was just uh, probably more than he could describe. And, and then a <coughs> another uh, young man from the Dominican Republic, he said it was just like Sliding up a rabbit hole into Wonderland. Uh, a man from the Soviet Union, he's, he said, well, he said, where, where is home? If the place that you're from no longer exists, uh, it was, uh, to him, it was just a place. And then there was a young lady from Delhi, India, and she began to think about the question, and she came up with an analysis that, uh, that it was just a multicultural people from all walks of life and uh, that she just felt like that she had breathed in the air of a million misfits. Well, I think the point today is that uh, we go through changes of life and oftentimes we find ourselves perhaps at that juncture to where we may feel like we're a little bit of a misfit. Uh, we just didn't. We just don't fit in, or at this particular juncture. Uh, and as was the case with others, uh, I'd like to turn your attention to Matthew chapter twenty-one, verses twelve through sixteen. <clears throat> and Jesus went into the temple of God and cast out all them that sold and brought in the temple, and overthrew the tables of the money changers and the seats of them that sold doves. And he said unto them, it is written, My house shall be called the house of prayer, but you've made it a den of thieves. And the blind and the lame came to him in the temple, and he healed them. And when the chief priests and scribes saw the wonderful things he did, the children crying in the temple and the, saying, Hosanna to the son of David, they were sore displeased. And he said unto him, Hearest thou what these say? And Jesus said unto them, Yea, have you never read out of the mouth of babes and suckling thou hast perfected praise? Hallelujah. I, I'd like to just minister on the subject today, a place for misfits. A place for misfits. Uh, surely we've all felt like a misfit at one time or another. Amen. And we have felt some inadequacies and, and situations. I, I like for us just to pray in the spirit. Ask the Lord to speak to us today. Would you join me? Lord Jesus, Lord, we need you in this moment of time. We need you to speak into our lives. Lord, we need your spirit, Lord, just to operate, Lord, in a magnificent way in this house today and in our lives. Lord, in the lives of our children and young people and our elders, all of us today, we need your divine touch. And Father, we're inviting you to speak to us today and give us ears to hear what the spirit is saying to the church let us hear, Lord, what you're, Lord, investing in us and, Lord, how you're directing us. Let us give attention to you today. We ask in the name of Jesus Christ. 
Amen. God bless you. You may be seated. Amen. No doubt we've all gone to some type of social function and we didn't feel like we fit in. Maybe we have entered into conversations sometimes that we may have felt like is a little bit over our head. Uh, amen. We may arrive at a function dressed casual and everybody else is dressed up or we might uh, show up, you know, dressed up and everybody else is dressed casual and we just don't feel like we're fitting in. Somehow we didn't get the memo. Uh, but, uh, you know, uh, there's a lot of things that happen in life and so uh, no doubt there's been times that we have felt like we're just a misfit. Amen. If you never felt that way, then uh, let me applaud you today. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Because there's so, so many things in life. Amen. Uh, I'm, I'm talking about people today, like a young lady, amen, that doesn't feel like she measures up, and so uh, she goes with the latest craze and styles, and, and she props up her image on social media, and she is vulnerable by her cravings for the least bit of attention, but the, the root of it all is that she just feels like a misfit. Maybe she doesn't feel like she's pretty enough, or she doesn't have a certain social status, and or she just doesn't uh, fit the mold, so to speak. Or, you know, I, I've seen even men sometimes they have such a desire for affirmation and respect, and and they they just become driven uh, with a desire to succeed or to control or to win. When at the heart lies that inadequacy, they feel like perhaps they're just a little bit of a misfit. You know, we we adopt these personas and. And every day, people are masking arrayed around, and, and they hide behind these flimsy facades of what people uh, think of them. You know, we, we all, we care about what people think to a degree, don't we? Come on, we do. And, we, and for the most part, people want to, they, they want to fit. They don't want to be a misfit. And, and so that's what happens. And, and all the while, sometimes that people are doing these type of actions, they're kind of like the man behind the curtain in Oz. But I'm here today to remind us all that there is a place for misfits. Amen. And that is the kingdom of God. There is a place for whosoever will. Amen. They can come and drink of the waters of life freely. It doesn't matter about their social status. It doesn't matter about the, their uh, status financially. It doesn't, doesn't matter about their height or their weight or what they look like, the color of their skin. Amen. There is a place for them. It is in the kingdom of God. Amen. Praise God. And, and there's a place for people who are hurting. There is a place for those, amen, that's perhaps gone through a divorce and, and really they just feel a little bit guilty or, or out of place. Well, there is a place. God has a place for that individual. And I believe that there is room for a person who might feel like a Simon Peter who stood up and said that, oh, I'll never leave you but quickly did so. I believe there's a place for the individual who may be working 60 plus hours a week and, and uh, maybe has done that for a long time and, and it maybe doesn't feel like they're getting anywhere and, but they've reached a place they just don't want to do it anymore so they wonder where and how they're going to fit in somewhere else. I've uh, had the, the opportunities in life, if you call it that, amen, and uh, that my wife and I, we have moved from one city to another because of the ministry, from one state to another. And uh, there's always those questions, how are we going to fit in? And so we, you have to make a whole brand new family of friends. But you know what? It works in the kingdom of God. I'm telling you, you don't become a misfit, amen, when you're in the kingdom of God. You fit in because there's not that that uh, critical, judgmental spirit, amen, that the world has. But I'm glad that there is a church, amen, of the Lord Jesus Christ that has welcoming arms, amen, and there to help in these times of situations, amen. Or it might be an individual who bears the scars of rejection, amen, and uh, maybe they, they just have a difficult time getting along with people, so they shun people and they shun Amen, getting involved in situations. But I'd like to say again that there's a place in the kingdom for you. 
You may feel like you, you don't have all the talents and skills and the abilities that someone else has, but there's still a place for you in the kingdom of God. Uh, I think we too often gloss over the stories in the Word of God that we read about them because, you know, we, we tend to forget that, uh, uh, that Rahab was a harlot. And the Bible doesn't just say that once. It says it three distinct times, Rahab the harlot. Amen. Uh, it wasn't just reminding uh, her of her past, but it was reminding everyone of the fact that there was a place for her in the kingdom of God. Amen. You know, even Sarah laughed when uh, there were, the news came that she was going to have a child, but uh, she did have the child. And so we forget about those folks who have a mixture of staggering faith and open weakness. I know these people, they can be kind and gentle and holy and defenders of the faith one minute, and yet they can become insecure and unstable and disbelieving and lying and, and doing things that they just couldn't even imagine the next. I'm glad that there's a place of forgiveness and mercy and grace is in the kingdom of God. Hallelujah. I'm glad that we've got a Savior today that doesn't take us and throw us in the garbage heap. Amen. Because of something that happens in our life. But He has everlasting arms to embrace us and to help us in the time of need. Hallelujah. I'm glad that we can have a faith in God that, that just keeps us moving forward. Hallelujah. I read the story of uh, Mike Yakakali, if I'm pronouncing his name correctly, he died a few years ago in a car accident, and he was one of the leaders in the Jesus Freak movement uh, back in the 60s, and uh, he pushed his way into mainstream religion in America, and he was the founder of uh, Youth Specialties, an editor of the Wittenberg, uh, and he also became a pastor. And, uh, and so after uh, he lost his life in the accident, his wife, uh, who had labored faithfully with him, uh, published a book that he had just finished. It was called Messy Spirituality, God's Annoying Love for Imperfect People. Th there's something about that. I, I, I'm glad that we've got a God that loves imperfect people. Come on, while I was yet a sinner, he loved me. Come on, while we were doing things that was contrary to God and his ways, he loved us. God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. Amen. He had a hope for us when we didn't have any hope. Well, he had a place for us when we didn't know that we would fit in. Oh, I'm so glad that he had a plan for us. But in the book, Mike tells the story of people who have come to grips with their lack of togetherness and they, and they turn to God. Mike tells the story of a man by the name of Eric Amen. Who was a recovering alcoholic, and he stood up in the church one day, and and while they was receiving the offering, he asked the pastor if he could say a word, and so uh, they gave him the mic. He began to talk about the situation that he was he was pretty torn that day because uh, he had struggled so much with alcoholism, and they reached a place that his wife told him. He said, "Eric, is either you, uh, you and your alcoholism, or it's going to be me. It's not going to be both anymore. Today is the day of decision." And he said, I've got to make a decision today. And he said, as a matter of fact, I, I really need your prayers, amen, because of this ultimatum. But you know what? He said, I, I have decided. He said the place was very quiet for a few moments. And then Eric responded, and he said, I've decided to choose my wife. Of course, the congregation, they erupted in applause and no one said it, but you could hear it. Good decision. Good decision. Now, I don't know who's in this room today and, and what you may be struggling with and what the circumstances are, but I'm here to tell you God has a plan for your life and that God has a place for your life. Hallelujah. I'm glad today to know that He's a God that forgives us when we repent. I'm glad that He's a God that takes away all of our sins. Amen through baptism in His name. I'm glad today that He offers us a hope of regeneration through the power of His Spirit, amen, that enables us to find that place in His kingdom that is just perfect for us. 
If you haven't found that place, I want you to know there's a place for you. God's got a, a will for your life, and it's in His kingdom. Let me make a statement here today. Life is not the way we wish we were. Life is the way we are. And that's really what God's interested in. He's interested in what we are today. We are people today on this earth that He paid the ultimate supreme price, amen, for atonement for our past and our hurts and our bruises, amen. And all the times that we may have felt like a misfit, amen, God's saying, I got a place, amen, that you'll fit in. Hallelujah. I believe it's just part of our nature. Amen. We want to fit in. And I'm sure that we can all testify of a past. But I'll think of that old song. This is my story. This is my song. Praising my Savior. All the day long. Come on, we've got a story to tell. There was a time that we didn't fit in. There was a time we probably didn't feel like we'd be welcome. But you know what? The Lord Jesus Christ changed all of that. Come on, He made a way where there seemed to be no way. Come on, He, he is the one that has the welcoming arm. It's His church. He said, Up on this rock, I'll build my church. It's not mine, it's his church. I can't decide who he puts in it. It's his decision. And I'm glad about that today. Hallelujah. Jesus is the, the magnet for all misfits. His house becomes the refuge for the rejected. I read the story of a lady by the name of Kim Poo. She was uh, just a young girl, nine years of age, there. The Vietnam War, she was Vietnamese, and she just happened to get caught one day in one of the aerial sprays of napalm, and it's very, very flammable, and it caught her body on fire at nine years of age, and she suffered tremendously. They, there was a photographer that was there and was happened to help her in her desperate moment and took her to the hospital, and they did everything they could and they said, there's just nothing more we can do. You're just going to have to take her to the morgue. But God had other plans. And so they were able to find another place of refuge for her. And, uh, and she had scars over 65% of her body. Are you talking about misfits? People could find a place of being a misfit. I, I know people who have... Situations in their life and in their bodies, they, they, they don't feel complete. But God doesn't feel that way today. I'm here to remind us all God has a place for everybody. Come on, there, I, I know of a preacher that's preaching the gospel and he doesn't have any arms. Come on, there's people from all walks of life, but God has a place for them. And so uh, this, this lady, she, uh, she had to go through a lot of different surgeries and a lot of different scarring in her life. But one thing that she found later on in life as she moved from Vietnam that she got an opportunity to go to Canada or to Cuba and then she went to Canada. But in the process of this, she found, amen, the Lord Jesus Christ to be Savior of her life. And it revolutionized her life and her thinking. And even though that she felt like she had a whole lot of shortcomings and, and uh, that uh, she had a, a lot of pain of the past, that she felt lame and halt and, and different from everybody else. But she had certainly experienced the welcoming arms of the Lord Jesus Christ. And she found a place where she totally fit in. You know, I, I realize today that there's some people that may be in the church that still doesn't feel like they fit. But I'm telling you, you can find that niche. You can find that place. It's there for all of us today. Amen. You ever think about the two disciples, Matthew and the Simon the Zealot? Matthew was a tax collector, and Simon was a tax protester. 
Matthew had money. Simon didn't have any. Matthew once made a living overcharging people. And Simon had a purpose in his life to overturn people like Matthew. (laughs) But God has such a marvelous way of bringing people together. Hallelujah. Come on, he's got a place for misfits today. And so at the feet of Jesus Christ, all these differences was laid aside. And these two misfits found a home. Amen. And they found a place in Jesus Christ. I'm appealing to your senses today. I realize I'm not giving you a hundred scriptures today. Gave you that in Sunday school. But I'm appealing to your senses today and your sensitivity because I feel like somewhere in the deep recesses of our souls that we really want to fit. Someone had posted a question on the on the web. And they said, if I start a church of misfits, would anybody come? They, they got literally hundreds of responses of people who said they absolutely would come because there's a lot of people who feel like they're a misfit. I feel the Holy Ghost talking to some people today. Hallelujah. I'm going to close today. Tell you a story about Tony Campolo. He was a journalist and he flew to Honolulu for a speaking engagement. He was also involved in the ministry. He had jet lag. He was tired, but he, he wanted to, to get a cup of coffee. And so just to, down from the hotel, he found a little diner. He went in and, and got some coffee and while he was there there were some ladies that came in this was about midnight at night and and they had been partying and and having a big time and uh, he just couldn't help but overhear them because they were loud and they were talking about one of the ladies having a birthday the next day and that uh, her name was Frances and so they were just uh, talking about this and so uh, after they left the uh, Tony went over and talked to the owner of the diner and he said uh these, these ladies come in here. Oh, yeah, they come in here every night. And, uh, and he's, he knew that this lady that was going to have a birthday, her name was Frances. And, uh, and so he, he, he worked out an arrangement with this diner owner that uh, the next evening he, he arrived early and he began to uh, decorate the place uh, for a birthday celebration and had balloons brought in. And, and uh, he had he'd telling other people and they began to gather in and and so, uh, because he, he had overheard Francis saying, I've never had a birthday party in my life. And so, uh, Tony had planned a birthday celebration for her. And sure enough, about midnight again, here comes this group of ladies, and Francis was them, and there was such a big surprise, and uh, wishing her a happy birthday uh, on that particular occasion. And there was just something that happened in Frances' life that night. Even though she was just overwhelmed that somebody would take the time to celebrate her birthday, she also began to weep and to begin to cry because she just couldn't understand how someone could care enough to do that, especially a stranger. And it wasn't long that everybody were wiping their eyes, including the diner operator. Again, ask the question, what kind of preacher are you? He said, I'm the kind of preacher that throws birthday parties at midnight for prostitutes. So we asked the question today, what kind of Christian are we? What kind of church is this? I'm saying that this is a church for misfits. Come on, it doesn't matter if you, you've been a drug dealer. Amen. God wants you in His kingdom. Come on, it doesn't matter if you've been a liar and a thief and an adulterer. Amen. He wants you in his kingdom. He's got a place for you. Amen. We find that Jesus spent much of his ministry dealing with sinners and publicans. Amen. He was dealing with people from all walks of life because he's wanting them all to know they are welcome in his kingdom. Come on. I'm so glad that he's included you and me, aren't you? 
Come on. This might be the place where a million misfits, hey man, is breathed. Come on. The place where people are welcome. The place where people are wanted. I believe that this is a place for healing today. It's a place of change and transformation. It's a place where the hand of God can be gently placed on your life and give you the reassurance that he has a wonderful place for you in his kingdom. Anybody in the house today, you say, Lord, I don't understand everything. But really, I, I, I do want to be a part of your kingdom. You don't, you don't get holy to get God. You get God to get holy, to be like him. And so we understand today that there's people from all walks of life that has done all kinds of things. And it's not for me to judge or for you to judge. Come on. Jesus Christ come to save those, amen, who've done horrible, horrific things in their life. Come on, I believe that Jesus Christ walks down death row in the prison cells and say, I died for you. You can, you can be saved. It doesn't matter who that individual is. Come on, he's a, he's a God with open arms. He's a God with forgiveness. He's a God of compassion. He's a God who is extending and multiplying mercy. Hallelujah. Why don't we stand together today and there's just somebody. We'd just like to step out from where you are and just say, I just want to have a little talk with Jesus today. I just want to give some expression to what I feel in my spirit today. I just want the Lord to help me. Maybe you don't feel like a misfit. Maybe you fit in just perfectly today. Maybe there's something else. You just need something from the Lord today. Come on, there's no, there's, there's no place of embarrassment here today. There's no place. There's nobody sitting in the judgment seat today. There's nobody that's going to think any less of you today. If you just come and talk to the master for a few moments here today. Say, Lord, I just want what you have for my life. I'm not going to be afraid. Lord, I'm asking you, Lord, to help me to find that place. Lord, it's for me. God bless these that have come today. Come on, let's talk to Jesus. Father, we acknowledge you today as the Lord of our life. We acknowledge you today as the healer of every hurt. Lord, you're the one today that helps us, Lord, when we feel like we're a misfit. When we feel like, Lord, there's just no hope. When we feel like, Lord, nobody cares or everybody's staring. Today, Jesus, we surrender to you. Today, Jesus, we offer ourselves to you. It's you today, Lord, that we hunger for. It's you today that we long for. Oh, we need you, Jesus. Jesus, we turn ourselves to you. Lord, help us today. Lord, I pray you bless the lonely. Bless the hurting. Bless those today, God. God, this feeling, Lord, maybe they're feeling left out. Maybe they're feeling, Lord, lonely today. Lord, comfort their hearts. Heal their hurts. Strengthen them today. And they're resolved to press on. Oh, thank you, Jesus, for your love toward us. Oh, thank you today for loving us. Oh, we need you, Jesus. Help our hurts. Help our wounds. Help us to heal. Take us to another dimension, another level. God, that we can be like you. Oh, let your spirit embrace us today. Let your spirit lift us today. Oh, that your spirit would work in us. Take us, Lord, the spiritual journey with you today. Lord, we long for you. We hunger for you today. Lord, we want to become what you've chosen for us today. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus.
be seated for just a moment. We're, we're closing. I sadly read all of the statistics of young people and older people alike who are taking their lives. Apparently feeling like there's no other place they fit in. But I just want you to know of assurance today that God loves you. And He does have not only a place, but He has the perfect place. The perfect place. Maybe you don't understand the fullness of that, but I assure you He does. Everybody's different. Everybody's different. But that's... uh, one of the things that God loves because he was the one that made us different. Nobody has the two same fingerprints. It's made us all uniquely different. That means every one of us is tremendously valuable to God. Come on. The rarer that a a thing is or a person, the more valuable it is. And there's only one of you on this planet. Oh, yeah. There's... Billions of people, but there's only one of you. And that makes you very, very special in the eyes of God. Very valuable. You're just as important as anyone else to God. He went to Calvary for you just as much as anyone else. So just understand that you're valuable to God. And give Him an opportunity to work in your life. Thank you. We appreciate your faithfulness to the house of God. And we say again, we're glad for our guests that's been within our gates today. We pray God's blessings on your life uh, to be with you, to guide you. Uh, We all need the Lord. uh, So let's continue to let him take us to where he wants to lead us. Amen. Praise God. If you'll bow your heads, we'll pray today. Lord Jesus, we thank you for your presence in this house today. We thank you for your word. We thank you, Lord, for your spirit speaking to us today. We pray, God, that you would bless, Lord, every individual that's been in this house this afternoon. Enrich their life. Give them divine direction and guidance from day to day. Lord, we pray that your will be done on this earth as is being done in heaven. We pray your favor, Lord, upon this congregation. And we give you thanks for it in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Let our guests know we appreciate their presence here today.